Hello, welcome to TVJ Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and Cape Communication Studies. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We're also live on Music 99. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is Cape Communication Studies, and we will be discussing, gathering, and processing information. I am Sharika Powell Easy. And I am your boy, Kevin Powell. No relations, right? Family. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, okay. what are we doing today, Sharika? Okay, so today, viewers, we have a list of objectives taken from the communication studies syllabus that we want to take you through. Now, our first objective is identify the characteristics, organizational features, and modes of expression of different genres and types of writing and speech. Then we're going to be focusing on distinguishing between the writer's main idea and his or her main purpose or points. Identify language techniques and organizational strategies in different modes of writing. And then we're going to be evaluating the writer's tone. So that's what we have for you today, students. So let's look at the roadmap. Where are we headed? Okay, so we want to take you on a journey with us. And on this journey, we will be identifying types of discourse. Then we're going to look at organizational strategies and language techniques. And we are going to look at how we evaluate tone. All right. So let's look at modes of writing, Sharika. So as you know, students, there are four different types or modes of writing, yes? And so we want to look at what these four different modes of writings are, and we want to, to, to understand how to distinguish between each of them, and we want you to also look at how we can look at the organizational strategies as well. So can you say what these modes are and what each seeks to achieve? Yes, so we know that when writers write, they do this using different types of discourses or modes. So, while you're thinking about them or while you're recapping them, because these are things that you would have already know, let's take you through them. All right, so we're looking at expository writing. Persuasive writing. Descriptive writing. And narrative writing. And I'm sure we remember all of these types of writing in our first classes in um, information processing and gathering. So we're looking at expository, persuasive, descriptive, and narrative writing today. So let's do an activity, Sharika. So on the screen, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we have some sentences, four sentences. I'm going to ask Sharika, I'm going to read each, and I'm going to ask Sharika if she can just tell me what each sentence, what mode of writing is found in each of the sentences on the board. So the first one says, Sharika, she did not sit the Spanish exam in May. What do you think that type of writing is? Aww. Think about it, students. So she did not sit the Spanish examination in May. This is giving us some information. Yes. Um, it's a fact, yes. I think. So this should be expository writing. All right. Am I correct? Well, we're not going to tell you if you're correct just yet. We're going to go through the other sentences okay. and then we'll give you all the answers at the same time. The second sentence says, therefore, she, the expression is meaningless. Therefore, the expression is meaningless. What type of writing is this, Sharika? So therefore, and there I am using a transitional word. So there's a transitional word there. Therefore, so it means that probably I would have been saying something before that. The expression is meaningless. This sounds persuasive. All right. Am Me I correct? Remem remember your answers, you know. So we have ex expository first, then persuasive next. The next sentence says, we jumped in the back of the pickup and headed towards the beach. We were in, the f we were in for a fun-filled day. Little did we know that someone would be at the back. Where, what kind of writing do you think this is? And I love this part before I answer. Look out, girl. Someone screams. Yes. This is narrative it's all telling right. a story all right and you see the dialogue there eh? yes seth draped the multicolored satin scarf 
around her neck as she strutted down the runway. This sounds like what now, Sharika? Descriptive, um, yes, I'm um, describing that multicolored satin scarf that was placed All around right. the neck. So this is descriptive. All right, you sound, you sound bright, no, my friend. Let us see if you oh, are yes, actually correct <laughs> in uh, your responses. So you said exposition for your first answer. You are indeed correct. You said persuasion for your second answer. You are indeed correct. Then you said narration because you saw the dialogue there. Yes. And then, of course, the last one you mentioned was description. And so you are correct. So these are the four. And we have said to you, students, how to identify each. Um, and we are going to look at some of the characteristic features of each of the modes of writing. All right. So for expository and exposition, and usually for gathering and processing for your module one, most of the articles that are posted, they are usually expository in nature. That is correct. No, for exposition, we noticed earlier when I spoke about facts and giving all of that information. So in an exposition, the writer seeks to bring clarity to ideas, to analyze a situation, define a term, and give information. So it's all about facts. It's all about information, yes, clarity. Pro yes, okay. providing information, clarifying information. Yes. And this is why we call this type of writing informative writing. Can we think of some examples we could share with the students in terms of informative writing? We're talking about things like speeches, right? Yes. News articles and reports, right? Yes. Yes, so yes, those yes. those expository essays that you write and yes. those articles that you... to explain a concept or to explain a point. Yes. Lovely. So let's look at the other type of discourse now. We're talking right. about narration here now. And this kind of discourse is used to create a story it can be used to report on, a, on an event, presents information, explain procedures, illustrate abstract ideas, and can sometimes be also used to support arguments. So storytelling is, the, is, the, is an important thing here, right? We are retelling our experiences. We are retelling some historical information. Yes, we're talking about the who, the when, the why, the where. And so all of that information becomes important. Right, Sharika? Oh, yes. So we're doing yes. narrative now. So the next piece of writing is description. Talk to me about this one, Sharika. All right. So this is where we appeal to all the senses. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing, I'm hearing, I'm smelling, I'm tasting. Yes, you're so getting in, me hungry right here now, Sharika. Yes. So with <laughs> description, we usually show and not just tell. So when you describe something to me, so say, for example, you describe some food to me. Mm -hmm. Based on the description, I'm supposed to be tasting all of that food. Yes. Oh, so yes. The writer, the writer is appealing to all our senses. Yes. And, and we're making sense of the world through the sensory details. Oh, and then yes. the last one here is argumentation. And I love this I, one. I don't this think you like this one more, more than, than I do, you know. Why am I right? Eh? Mm -hmm. It talks about trying to persuade and to convince the audience mm -hmm. that my point or my claim is true. Right? And so it's the why am I right? We are trying to prove something using mm -hmm. logic, using varying means of appeal. Yes, and with this one, we want to somebody to see something from our perspective. Yes. So when you write yes. something, you write an argumentative piece, you want somebody to see something from your perspective. You want them to agree with what you are saying. Certainly. And so we usually say with argumentative writing, it is debatable mm -hmm. because there are always two sides to an argument. Indeed. So I am right. And I am right. I know I am right. I am right. right. I don't what? know about you. I am right. Why are you right? And I have points to prove why Exactly. I'm right. We need to have reasons in, in support of indeed, our argument. Indeed. And then coupled with that is persuasion, eh? persuasive writing. Mm -hmm. And persuasive writing involves appealing to the emotions, appealing to the ethics of the, the, the reader and the audience. And it also involves the three appeals of persuasion. And then it can we guess what these three appeals are? Students, you should know this. The three appeals to persuasion. These are ethos, yes? Athos. Pathos, Pathos. And then <laughs> logos, right? Yes. yes. Ethos is the trustworthiness. We're establishing credibility. Why should I believe what you have to say? And so that's why sometimes when we're trying to persuade somebody, we appeal to authorities like doctors and scientists mm -hmm. because they are credible in the field, right? Yes. And we know that 
there's a plethora of information out there. Yes. And when you are getting information for your research, you cannot just go ahead and grab any no, information. No, no, no. You have to use you those information that is credible. Very right? good. And then, of course, there's pathos. We're appealing to the emotions now. And that's the biggest appeal, you know, where we can appeal to people's emotions. Oh, their, yes. their soft spot, sense of pity, oh, sense yeah. of fear. Whatever that em those emotions are, we appeal to it. And then Logos. Logos is now appealing to the logic, logics. using reasons, scientific data, facts and examples to support our argument. And, of course, for gathering and processing information, whenever you choose sources, you have to ensure that they are credible and we also know that for your oral presentations that you will do or would have done you are expected to evaluate the sources, sources that you um, have, have chosen used. indeed yes. indeed and so ladies and gentlemen we're going to look at some of the organizing strategies and principles that are used in each of these um, discourse types let's look at exposition and mind you let us note that we have different types of discourses that we have been, as we have been looking at. And for each of these types of um, discourses, they are organized differently. differently so yes. certain terms and certain words and certain expressions, Indeed. you will see them being used differently according to the type of discourse. Certainly, certainly. So, so for exposition, for example, we're going to find words like definition as a part of the organizing strategy. Mm -hmm. Comparison and contrast, mm -hmm. illustrations, analogy and cause and effect, process analysis, subject analysis, and problem and solution. So sometimes you'll read an article, you'll read a passage, and they're organized differently based on what the writer is trying to achieve. Exactly. If the writer is trying to compare two different um, elements or items, he's going to use compare and, and contrast, contrast as the organizing principle. Exactly. If he's trying to show something that caused an event to happen and the and effect, effect of it, then of then course, we're going to be using cause and effect cause is going to effect. be the principle being used there. Very so good. let us look at the organizing principle for narration. How do you think a, a writer who's writing a story would be organizing that piece, that piece of writing, Shariko? But, well, I know that the information cannot be all over the place mm -mm, because it mm -mm. has to follow a particular pattern. Indeed. So you cannot... Start well, sometimes they can start at the end and use flashback techniques, yes, etc., to help us to understand what they are doing. But there must be some but, order, but there must be some order. So, do you want to tell us what? So there are different types of orders. Are. We can talk about chronological order. Mm -hmm. Yes, we talk about time sequence. And usually when we're telling a story or we're relating an event, we usually go in chronological order from, from day one down to day 10. And we go in sequentially, right, through, through that means. But of course, also, no story is complete without the use of dialogue. Oh, yes. Because we need to hear the characters speak in the story, right? Yes, we want There to. needs to be action words yes, and man. dynamic words mm -hmm. and conflict. No story, Sharika, is complete without conflict. There, there must be a problem. Yes. And there must be a because problem. Life because life will have problems. Oh, true. yes. And then we are going to look at our characters, look yes. at the characterization, and we want to see how those characters deal with or solve those, those problems. problems. Certainly. All right. So let's talk about now description. We're talking about looking at the senses. How do we organize a descriptive piece? All right. So we're talking about appealing to the senses, looking at descriptive words and phrases. We're looking at the mood, eh, the overall atmosphere that the reader will get after reading the piece. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about this later in the lesson, tone, the attitude of the writer. And the attitude of the writer will help to determine certain words that the writer is going to use. And then certainly no descriptive piece is complete without, without the use of figures, figures of, of speech. speech. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too later, you know, because it falls under language yes. techniques as well okay. all right so let's move on to talk about now argumentation and persuasion what right. are some of the ways in which a writer can organize this particular discourse okay so again it depends on the type what's the right the purpose of the writer and what the writer which is wishes to bring across mm -hmm. so for an argumentative piece or persuasive we can have facts and 
slash opinions. Opinions, yes. So, and they are different too. Now, so let's need to understand that there's a difference between facts, facts and opinions. Mm -hmm. But both are useful in, in an argumentative piece. Yes, because my opinion definitely counts. Indeed, and mine definitely counts, Sharika. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to refute you. Right? I'm going to give you counter arguments. So I'm going to appeal to authority. I'm going to use emotional appeals. And I'm going to use my own personal experience. Because guess what? Mm -hmm. My point is right. Mm -hmm. and You're not arguing me? Yes. And so, yes, but I already um, looked at my arguments. I already um, know what you are going to come up with. Right. So, you're going to counter, you're yes, going to have a counter going to argument. Co yes, I'm going to counter all, right, all, all of right. that. All right. If you, if you say so, my friend, if you say so. And I'm going to be talking about my personal experience. Yes. And it's my own personal experience. And so that you adds to the emotional say, appeal. Not oh, true? yes. So people will start feeling sorry for and, me. And, and, and then they will jump on my all side. Right, all right. We're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not going to continue this debate. We'll continue with it later, Sharika. All, right. all right. So let's move on now to looking at something that is very crucial. Yes. Now, students, you don't necessarily... At this point, we're, you're going to be, not going to be writing an essay anymore. Praise God and hooray for you. But certainly, you still need to know about identifying main idea, right? Main idea. So, All right. bullseye there now. So, whenever a writer writes, he or she must have something specific that they want to write about. Mm -hmm. So, they can write about anything mm -hmm. so the main point what they write about i think is what they want to bring across indeed so main the point. main point main idea What's the, yes the main idea so we're going to ask the main idea is the most dominant and imperative statement that the writer makes about the topic right yes, yes. and we know that for module one one of the first questions that is usually asked is what is the main idea? So in finding the main idea, students, you have to ensure that you read the passage carefully. Mm -hmm. And the main ideas usually they are expressed in our topic sentences. Yes. And when the writer writes, they will express different main ideas based on the different um, topics. So when the writer writes and uses paragraphs, you will find different main ideas in the different paragraphs. Indeed. And as, as you said earlier, focus on the topic sentences because that sometimes or most times give you a great sense of what the main idea is. So if you're going to be asked um, you know, to say what is the piece about, or what is the writer saying about this particular topic? Mm -hmm. Chances are you're trying to identify the, the main, main idea. idea. So you can ask who. You can ask what. Yes. So you can go and question yourself while you're reading. But most importantly, mm -hmm. Sharika, when looking at the main idea, you see, mm -hmm. never state the main idea as, as a, a verb. verb. There's a place for that. I'm going to talk to you about the place for that when we look at purpose. And usually... When you are expressing your answer, you will say the main idea is that. that. So therefore, right it can never is. be a verb. Indeed. So you look at the piece and you identify the main idea. So we have our first activity for our students, our second activity actually. All right. So since you read first yes. and I got to see how brilliant I was. Yes. Now I want to give you a chance right. to see how brilliant All you right. are. All right. And so I am going to be reading this passage for the benefit of the persons in Radio Land. Indeed. Who want to hear. So let's go. So identify the main point. And I want persons to listen and Cape students try and figure it out. A new hearing device uses a magnet to hold the touchable sound processing portion in place. Like other aids, it converts sound into vibrations, but it is unique in that it can transmit the vibrations directly to the magnet and then to the inner ear. This produces a clearer sound. The new device will not help 
all hearing impaired people. Only those with a hearing loss caused by infection or some other problem in the middle ear. It will probably help no more than 20% of all people with hearing problems. Those people who have persistent ear infections, however, should find relief and restored hearing with the new device. All right. So what I should do now, Sharika, what do you want me to do? I want you to think about what I read. Yes. We're going to read it, and I want you to tell me what is the main idea. So think about it. So think about what the passage is talking about, and then that should help you to tell me what the main idea is. All right. So if I look at this passage... Clearly, I'm getting some information, so I know that this is a per, is a descriptive. No, 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 no. Is Sorry, wrong. Descriptive. Expository. I'm, okay. I'm giving information, so it's expository, right? And then I hear some words repeated in this passage. I hear words like hearing aid. Hearing. So clearly, I'm thinking, okay, if hearing aid is repeated often in this passage, then it must mean that hearing aid is an important subject matter. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, Sharika, that the passage, the main point of the passage, is about hearing aid mm -hmm. yes? yes and it says that some it will help some people but it perhaps will not help everybody so i'm thinking it's the passage is about hearing aid mm -hmm. and that it will help most persons but not everybody will benefit but from not everybody from this let me see if i'm right hold on hold on hold on okay okay so mm -hmm. the discourse type is not descriptive all right good so it provided some factual information Indeed. and it um, outlined certain concepts. So it was expository in nature. Well, yes, exposition. And it consistently spoke about the new hearing device. Yes. Very good. And the new main idea is that new hearing device is now available for some, but not all hearing impaired People. Beautiful, and you were able to extract that from the reading the passage, Just looking at the key reading. terms, looking at the terms that are highlighted and are regurgitated throughout the text. All right. So, students, so remember that when you are asked to find the main idea, it means that you will have to read carefully. And remember, there's a difference between just reading and calling the words. You will have to read carefully mm -hmm. in order to find the main idea Indeed. and when you find that main idea the main idea is that good Indeed. Let's move on to purpose. How do you now identify the purpose of the writing? So we look at the main idea. We now need to look at purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why the author wrote the piece. Okay. Yes. So can you think students in can you un do you understand what the writer's purpose is? Yes, and how to express the writer's purpose? Think about that. All right. So while you're thinking, let me help you. So when we am writers write, each writer is unique, and each writer will write um, to feel, fulfill a different purpose. Indeed. So I may want to write something funny, and I think that um, people will be enthused by it. So sometimes you'll see these funny videos yes. going around or some um, poems and they are just funny. Then the writer may want to just get students um, all enthused and happy and aroused and amused. Entertained. So, entertained. Yes. So hence, that person will write accordingly okay sometimes people will write depending on the mood or sometimes they will write depending on they have something in mind that they want to just share they want the readers to see and so they write with a purpose so there's a purpose or an aim in mind that the writer is setting out to accomplish so there's right always a purpose so even when you write your essays you should write ask yourself with a purpose in mind what is my purpose why am i writing yes. this piece is it just to get an a well that that's not a bad idea though yeah, okay but, and yeah. that will help you to write well all right, all right. so 
this is where the verbs come in now. So you are allowed in this instance, students, to utilize your verbs to express the purpose of a particular piece. And as Sharika said earlier, each genre of writing or mode of writing will have specific purposes. So we have exposition, its purpose is to educate, to raise awareness, to inform or to sensitize. If you're trying to persuade, then your purpose is going to be to convince, to persuade or to influence or to even force. And if you are writing a story mm -hmm. that is narrative writing, then your purpose will be to tell a story. Yes. Like I said, probably you want to entertain. You may want to create humor in some way. And for those writing descriptive pieces, purpose could be to create awareness using sensory details to describe, to depict to illustrate All so right. those are and pay attention remember we said earlier that the purpose the purpose will be to to do something to do something to so do you have something. to do something and the writer is doing and, something and that is in the achieving what? his purpose and that is the the purpose of the, the writing purpose. <laughs> purpose not main idea but purpose entertain to entertain to, to persuade create. to create whatever it is let us look at this passage. This is another activity, students. Let's look at this passage that's going to be on the screen shortly. And let us see if we can identify the main purpose of the writer in this passage. For those in the radio land, let me read this, this passage for you. It says, the idiosyncrasies of the town is smoke. It rolls suddenly in slow folds from the great chimneys of the iron foundries and settles down in black, slimy pools on the muddy streets. Smoke on the wharves, smoke on the dingy boats of the yellow river, clinging in a coating of greasy soot in the house front. The two faded poplars, the faces of the passers-by, the long train of mules dragging masses of pig iron through the narrow street have a foul vapor hanging to their reeking sides. So, what's the purpose? Clearly. But before you get to the purpose, you should have asked me what is the mode of writing. Uh, true. What is because the mode? Let's go back to the article. Well, I heard you saying. Um, on Yellow River, so mm -hmm. I was getting long train of mules dragging, dragging masses and I was, oh, slimy pools, muddy streets. So right there and then I started visualizing and created some form of image in my mind. There was a picture and was then, being painted yes, through words, man, right? Yes, man. So it's like I was there in real life. Yes, man. And so I know that it is descriptive. All right. But you can... All right. So let me share with the audience then what the purpose of this writing is so the purpose or the writer's purpose is to describe as you said it's descriptive writing mm -hmm. so the purpose is to describe the decrepit state of the town and the state of gloom and decay that the occupants had to live with daily all right good so that's how we identify purpose statements ladies and gentlemen we have to identify what the writing is and then we'll be able to identify what the purpose of the writer is so we we'll move right. on now to organizational strategies. How well do you know them? Well, I just love this picture that is mounted. Mounted. Um, how well do you know them? The organizational strategies. You so know that if, a, if, a, if, a, if a, a coach wants his football team to win the match, he has to organize the team in a particular way, strategically. Yes. To put certain players at certain places in order to score the goal, right, Sharika? Yes. You play football, by the way. Um, no, I am more of a of a tracks person. Right. I can but run. But even in tracks, you have to organize the team. Not true. Yes, man, I have to organize. All right. The so really let us look team. at what the organizational strategies are. By right. definition, these are the means by which the writer achieves his or her intended purpose. All right, and one thing to note, though, Kevin. When the writer writes, we noted that they have their purpose. But how does the writer achieve his or her purpose? So what the writer does, he, has a num he employs a number of language strategies yes. and techniques in order to help him or her bring out the point 
and the concept that he or she wants to bring out. Certainly. And so the organizational strategies are used to help to convey the purpose and the objective of the writer. So, again, going back to our slide, we note that there are a few organizational strategies that we are accustomed to and that we should expect to see in various pieces of writing. These include classification and division, problem and solution, cause and effect, comparison and contrast. All right. We also have general to specific. Mm -hmm. We have spatial order. We have process analysis. So if I want to teach you how to bake a cake, then I would take you Walk through, me through the, the process. process and yes. take you through the steps. Indeed. So that is what we refer to as process analysis. Yes. Subject, we also have subject, subject analysis, personal experience that we discussed earlier. Indeed. And we have periodic development. development. And then there are what we call now language techniques. Language techniques, and that's a quick review. What are language techniques? And what are the, can you recall the categories of language techniques that you know and the examples li linked to each category? All right? So think about that language techniques and these categories. No, these are geared towards achieving a specific objective again. And this is how the writer manipulates language in order to achieve a particular purpose. Remember, everything goes back to the writer's what, Kirika? The writer's purpose, purpose or the effect the writer, the writer is trying to, to create. create. So let's look at a few of these language techniques so, that a writer may use or manipulate in writing. Go ahead, Sharika. So the writer may employ figures of speech. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, students sometimes don't like this part of the syllabus, right? Yes. That sometimes they know what each of the figures of speech is, you know, but they don't know how to identify it. And this is why you need to ensure that you familiarize yourselves with the different figures of speech and you know adequate and sufficient examples so that when you see them in a written work, you will be able to figure them out Especially quickly. in the multiple Especially choice. Especially in the multiple choice. Indeed. And then we have rhetorical questions. Yes. And we know that the writers use these in order to create an effect. Right, so the writer doesn't necessarily want an answer for a question. But they want us to contemplate. But eh? they want us to reflect, to contemplate and think about it. Indeed. There's also the so. use of emotive language, mm. Sharika. Yes. There's expert opinions, authoritative evidence, statistical data. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Evidence and proof. Yes, man. You have to yes. prove the point. So, yes. So yes. if I want to bring across the point, I am going to use my statistics and this will help to prove my point. Indeed. This. So we can link up Rest with statin. Case. We can link up with statin shortly. Yes. Students to get some statistics. All right, all right. All you, right. you do that. Then and is. then, of course, we have jargon and technical language that also is used. And so we, we talk about figures of speech like simile and metaphor, irony, repetition, hyperbole. All of these will help to evoke a particular effect or purpose that you're trying to convey to your reader. So let's look at some figures of speech now. We have three piece um, sentences here. Let us see if we can go through some of these. I'll take the first one. So it says, oh, what beautiful weather this is on this rainy morning. What figure of speech that sounds like? That so sounds look, oh, what beautiful weather this is on this rainy morning. Mm -hmm. So. It is raining. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, be kidding me. Mm -hmm. That is sarcasm. All right, all right. Let's look at the other one. It says, Michaela is a warrior on the battlefield of life. She's a warrior on the battlefield of life. That sounds like a metaphor to me. So you know? we're saying that she is a, a warrior. warrior. Yes. And that is a metaphor. Indeed. And, and I the love last this one. one. Yes, go ahead. She had a brave tremble in her voice. As she approached her boy, her, her boss. boss. I'm brave sorry. Brave tremble. But brave tremble. What are we doing? Can somebody be brave and trembling at the, at the same, same time? time? So it's contradictory. I'll put contradictory. them together. That's so all like an two oxymoron. Like terms together, yes. and that is an 
oxymoron. Look, there, you get them right. We get them right. We're brighty. Right. All right. All right. All right. Tone, as we wrap up, we were looking at tone. All right. The tone is the attitude of the writer or the author towards the topic or the subject that he or she is writing about. Yeah? Your mother ever tell us you're, you're talking to me with an attitude before? Yes, I guess to just listen to the words and listen to what accompanies mm. what I'm saying. But, mommy, I mm. didn't do this. Mm -hmm. And she said, don't speak to me in that tone Watch of voice, Watch that tone, child. boy. Indeed, indeed. Watch so that what is tone. the tone? So it's the attitude of the writer towards the subject matter. And students, here are some words that we can use to talk about tone. And for our viewers in Radio Land, we have a list of tones right here. I'm going to go through them quickly for you. So a tone, the speaker's tone can be concerned, passionate, cynical, sarcastic, bitter, benign, formal or informal, informative, urgent, annoyed, humorous, optimistic, or pessimistic, serious, and sad. All right. And that's how you identify. And let me just do this one quick example for the students. So it says, often you okay. feel you've done nothing when you've actually done a lot. That's because you did do, you did do seemed beneath notice. It was so small that it didn't count, but it did. Just as each stitch counts towards a finished dress, each brick or nail toward a house you can live in, each mistake toward knowing how to do things right. How would you define the tone in this instant? So, but it did. Just as each stitch counts towards a finished dress. So she's, I think she's encouraging me. She is. There is some encouragement. Some encouragement in going that. on in that statement. Yes, so, as we wrap up, Let's recap some of the things that we did in this mm -hmm. lesson. So today, we did... So, we are going on a break. No, that's all for but today, actually. <laughs> that's all okay, for C-Sec information for today. For, for today, for Cape Communication Studies. I hope you grasp some of the points we discussed, and you can catch a repeat on today's, of today's lessons on JNN today at 5 p.m. and in the School's Not Out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. here on TVJ. It, it will be also on Video On Demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I am Sharika Powell-Easy. And I am Kevin Powell. Up uh, next, CSEC Physics. Stay, stay with tuned. us. to 4 p.m. School's not out. Live CSEC and Cape Lessons here on TVJ. The Ministry of Education, Youth and Information along with TVJ present School's Not Out. CSEC and Cape Lessons live Mondays to Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 noon with weekly School's Not Out tutorials.